Um, thank you very much. Uh, welcome to everyone to this short keynote about uh, artificial intelligence and the application of artificial intelligence to countering and fighting against fake news and misinformation. Thanks uh, to the organizing committee for this uh, kind invitation to present our work. So first, uh, I will show a, a very brief description of my current research group. I'm leading and the head of a research group on machine learning and artificial intelligence at Technical University of Madrid in Spain. We are a multidisciplinary group, uh, mainly uh, composed by computer scientists, computer engineers, mathematicians, and physics. But uh, we have in our group other people from others uh, from areas like um, psychology, psychology, uh, sociology, etc. So uh, you can see here in this slide uh, some of our current uh, knowledge, knowledge and expertise in, uh, that we are applying to different uh, research and private companies projects. So, okay, let's go. Um, this is a short note about uh, how to work or how to handle or how to fight or detect uh, uh, information disorders. Or what is an information disorder? This is the first question. Okay, we, we talk about information disorders when we are thinking about any kind of uh, information that are directly false or that provides misleading information or that simply uh, are related to information with that this is not um, accurate information. So the problem about how to develop, how to detect, how to uh, avoid the spreading of this kind of information. So there is like uh, two very big problems, how to detect false information or misinformation, but because I think it's a better term to describe this inaccurate information, uh, how to try to stop or to fight against the spreading of this information. So uh, the, the, the term of misinformation, I think, is more adequate than uh, the popular fake news uh, concept because uh, all of these problems are related to the, 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 the concept of uh, info misleading information or inaccurate information. And uh, this, uh, and you can separate this kind of information between, between false and, uh, or inaccurate information and if you are thinking to harm people, uh, entities, uh, governments, societies, etc., etc., so this is a better classification of the concept of misinformation. And you can go to this uh, to this uh, paper, and you can see a very good uh, description of, of, of what exactly means the concept of misinformation. So would you would you move to the problem of, uh, for instance? Uh, the pandemic, the recent pandemic, our, uh, our last pandemic uh, on coronavirus, coronavirus. So you have a, a very serious problem because there are uh, like a like an overload or flow of information that are spreading uh, in uh, through the web, through physical and digital environments. Uh, and there is a lot of uh, very uh, dangerous information, especially the false information, that could affect to the general people, to the to the end users, to the citizens of any country, uh, that could origin uh, like a mistrust in health authorities or undermine their 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 reputation. So this could be generate uh, a very serious problem uh, in our societies. This uh, term, sorry, this term has been uh, defined or has been um, fixed as infodemics by the World Health Organization last year. So, uh, some examples of this infodemic are related, for instance, with the uh, anti vaccine groups uh, or the COVID 19 de denialists or the anti mask claims from these people that. Uh, that that try to convince the, 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 the general population that this is like a fake uh, virus or, like, or that this virus has been generated by a third part, by a third government, etc., etc. So, so these people generate some uh, very dangerous information that are very fast spread on the, on the networks. So 
uh, when anyone tried to think about how to combat this uh, infodemic or this uh, very dangerous information, okay, you, you, you can try to, to distinguish between four different dimensions. From the left, you can see here in the left, uh, like the, the knowledge. So this uh, dimension represents exactly, okay, what about the, 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 uh, the, the fact? So the, the fact that is uh, given by these anti-vaccine groups, for instance, is fact are true or are false. So what about the, 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 the problem with the vaccines and the outings? Uh, on, the, on the other hand, you can try to analyze the style or the, some features in the text to detect uh, some, uh, some uh, potential problems in the, in the propagations of, of this information. Um, when you're moving to the right, so you can see uh, how this, uh, you could be interested uh, to analyze how this information is propagated through uh, uh, mainly social networks or how, uh, how is your trust about the, 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 um, the, the source that they are generating or spreading the information. So to analyze these four different dimensions from the knowledge, uh, from the knowledge itself on the left to the source that are uh, generating or spreading uh, the, the information. There are two very popular uh, approaches. Uh, the first one are based on natural language processing to analyze the content of the, of the information. And on the right, you can use um, uh, computer techniques from social network analysis, from, from uh, graph-based computing to analyze the structure of the of the graphs of the uh, of the social of the networks and and to try to analyze or to understand how this information is propagated right i, I will present later briefly some of uh, a couple of our current trades that uh, both projects are undergoing they have uh, started like one month ago uh, the first one is based on uh, natural language processing and the second one is mainly based on social network analysis and both projects try to, to, to handle, to handle the, 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 uh, the whole problem of uh, detecting and preventing the, the, the propagation of, of uh, misinformation. So, okay, what, what are our main tools to, uh, to countering or to fighting against misinformation? Okay, I'm leading a, a research group on, on machine learning and artificial intelligence. So our main uh, tools to combat this uh, kind of information comes from uh, artificial intelligence. And from the last year, we have moved uh, from uh, uh, supervised machine learning to supervised machine learning. So currently we are uh, especially focused on the use of deep learning methods and uh, natural language methods uh, to combine these methods with social network analysis to try to develop uh, like a, a common solution, a, a, a solution that could be used uh, to, to detect and prevent the, the information. So you can see here like a very general schema of uh, the different research areas in artificial intelligence. So uh, you can see, uh, okay, may maybe this deep learning, okay, uh, this is of course, uh, is part of uh, supervised machine learning techniques, but it currently so popular that even in several uh, representation, you can see uh, like, uh, like in a different branch. So you can see here like uh, a natural language processing, it's a very classical, uh, research in artificial intelligence from the last 50 or 60 years and it has been uh, used for text generation, question answering system, classification, etc. etc. So our two main tools are based on natural language, language processing and machine learning. So when you, anyone thinks about natural language, uh, natural language is a highly interdisciplinary area so to make possible a successful NLP task, it is quite usual to use knowledge from other areas like mathematics, statistics, neuroscience, or of course, linguistics. So in this, uh, in this graphic, you can see here uh, several of the, of the very well tasks in natural language processing. NLU represents natural language understanding. So it's a, 
it's a more complex task. We are focused on natural language understanding because we, we need to detect or to know when a fact or a claim could be a misleading information or could be a fake information. So we need to, to focus on natural language understanding. Here you, you, you can see a, a very simple representation on some of the main research fields in natural language uh, uh, process. Uh, and you can see here, like from the left, that could be a focus on the speech recognition to analyze, for instance, the, my voice using the using the phonetics and using uh, the signal analysis. To the right, that is the most complex one when you try to analyze, for instance, the, the discourse, the the the, um, the knowledge that are involved inside this this uh, test or in this. Uh, in this uh, uh, information that you want to analyze from the natural language. So this uh, represents the, the classical NLP approach when you have different uh, stages because you need to pre-process the test using very classical uh, techniques like tokenization to remove stop words, to, uh, uh, to esteem or to, to look for the esteems of the words, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Later, you can use uh, different statistical uh, metrics to to extract several features from the text. And later, you can use these features and these uh, the, uh, the, the, the the mathematical representation of the text to train a, a machine learning model. And later, the output could be, of course, like. A, uh, to detect the sentiment or to classify the text, etc. But now, in the recent years, maybe in the last 10, 50, 10 years, it has been very popular the deep learning approach or methods. Deep learning are based, as uh, I think most of the attendees know, uh, are based on uh, neural networks, on deep neural networks, on a set of convolutional neural networks. So you can use a lot of different uh, uh, layers in this uh, neural networks very deep, so uh, you can avoid or you can forget most of this classical NLP task and directly preprocess or directly use the, the uh, directly the, the, the text to feed the, the the neural networks to train these deep learning models and later to obtain the output. So uh, one of the one of the 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 um, the problems with these deep learning methods, uh, as maybe uh, all of the attendees know, is the huge amount of uh, information, the huge amount of documents, and that this kind of system needs to train uh, an accurate model. So this is very important. Uh, currently, we are using maybe the, the most popular, the most popular. Uh, architecture from deep learning uh, methods, deep learning area. Uh, this architecture, the name is transformers. These transformers are extremely popular. Uh, these models learn to encode a word based on its interactions with the rest of the words in the sentence. That is, these transformers, like humans do, can understand the words according to their context. So these um, uh, models, these architectures from deep learning methods, can learn the relation between vaccines and outings and, uh, and, the, and, 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 the, and the context that join the concept of vaccines and outings. So they are trying to, to learn the, the different relationships between the, 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 the words and, and the context that, that this, uh, where these words appear. So this is a very popular, I will not go, uh, because this is a very uh, short keynote, I will not go to this very popular uh, um, encoder, decoder, deep learning based architecture, the name is BERT, 
is extremely popular. So my suggestion is to go there to go to the to the paper from the from the authors and to read. It is very popular and it's very easy to, to use. The architecture is quite simple and the model tries to learn to predict those words that are masked from the original text. And it has been uh, extremely used in different areas, especially to to generate text uh, from 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 the uh, from the from the scratch. So one of our current problems is related. Okay, so so you can use deep learning and these transformers to train very accurate models to detect test or to learn different uh, relationships in, uh, between different words or in, the, in, in a context, in a particular context. But uh, when anyone tries to fight or to work in the problem of uh, uh, misinformation detection, we have uh, an initial bottleneck. The bottleneck is that, okay, most of these uh, transformers has, have been designed, uh, have been trained for only one particular uh, language, that is English. So there is a huge number of uh, different uh, models in deep learning for natural language processing that have been trained only for English. But you know the, the, the fake news and the misinformation spread in different languages. So we need, for instance, uh, we are from Spain, and in Europe, there is a lot of different languages like German, English, French, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, etc. So we need a, an approach, an approach that must be multilingual. But this is a, this is one of our current bottlenecks because in this, uh, in other languages like, for instance, Portuguese or Hungarian, there are not so many uh, documents. There are not so many information in standard languages, so it can be very difficult to train these models in other languages. So for, the, for this reason, I will present briefly three of our pillars. We have currently ongoing three different projects, E-Verifier, Fight This and Civic. Uh, the first one is uh, funded by the European Commission. The second one is funded by the Spanish government. And the third one is funded by a private company, uh, by a bank, uh, BBBA. Uh, so, in this, uh, the first project, the Verifier, is a, in a is an international hub, mainly uh, composed by people from Spain and Portugal. We are 23 people, 23 partners from uh, Portugal and Spain, and we are uh, people from journalism from fact-checking companies and from computer science. So our goal there, there are different spreads, but this spread is extremely interesting because the uh, spread is a hub. So we are working together with other people from different areas, especially from journalism. And our main goal is to develop systems for detection of disinformation, disinformation, fake news, etc. So this goes uh, to the second project, the second project is Fight This. Fight This uh, is a project that is mainly focused. If you remember in my, in my previous slides, I was talking from the left to the knowledge, how to understand that a claim is really, is really a fake, to the, to the right, when I represent how to analyze how the information is spread through the network in a graph. So this spread is focused mainly is mainly focused on the problem on how to detect or how to prevent or how to model the spread of the information in online social networks. So this spread uh, is currently starting. It has a start like last month, right? So we are we are trying to uh, use our current findings in the in the last spread that we saw to the attendees some of our current results and, and we are trying to apply in online social networks the, the, the detection of uh, misinformation or information disorders applied into three particular areas health violent and extremist and extremist events and politics uh, so uh, 
I will show uh, our current, uh, our main findings on the on the problem of fighting against uh, misinformation and fake news is uh, uh, is on uh, has been generated by civic pro uh, proposal. So here the, the the goal is to is to move to the left of this uh, representation to the knowledge and to the identification. Uh, about when a particular claim is really a fake. So uh, our goal is to counter the spread of rumors and hoaxes. Right, so uh, in this project we are working, we are working with journalists and, uh, uh, and with these uh, partners, with these uh, this, uh, people. The, the, the main goal is to obtain a representative data set uh, to allow to build an accurate machine learning model, right? So the, the, the journalists are working here yeah, to give us a, a good data set that later we can use here in the machine learning uh, part to train our deep learning models. Of course, we are working too in, in, a, in a, a problem related to the explainable AI so how to show in this information in a, in a way that could be really useful for the end user. Our end user will be the, the, data, the, the data journalist or the journalist that need to check when a fact is fake or not. So uh, this is the architecture of our current uh, civic uh, system. And uh, it's based, I will not go in, into the details, it's based on a ground truth that is, is a database of hoaxes that has been checked, verified by journalists. And we are using two different modules, one to, uh, to obtain the similarity when any new tweet comes to the system and you can obtain the, the and uh, how similar or dissimilar is this new tweet against the hoaxes that are stored in our ground truth. And later we are using a second module, a natural language inference uh, system, to uh, ensure if this tweet is, uh, is supporting or is, uh, if there is an entailment between the, the tweet and the, and the hoax that uh, has been retrieved from the, from the database. So this is a better representation. So you can like a new tweet that uh, comes to your to to your uh, online social network uh, to your app app. So you can compare with uh, uh, our semantic uh, similarity model. Uh, you can compare this new tweet against a set of uh, hoaxes that has been checked by the journalist. Uh, we can retrieve the top end related hoaxes, right? And later with a, a module of uh, that uh, we are using a natural language inference algorithm, we can try to detect if there is an entailment, sorry, if there is an entailment between this new tweet and the, and the, and the facts that are uh, retrieved from the database. So, uh, uh, if, uh, if you remember, we are trying to use a multilingual approach to, uh, to allow uh, uh, or to generate an accurate and robust uh, model in, in a multilingual approach where we're using several uh, deep learning uh, models uh, trained where all of them are uh, transformers and we are using an ensemble of these models to allow generate a more, a more robust uh, deep learning transformer that can be used in currently 14 different languages. Right, so the natural language inference module is used to know if the sentence A, the new tweet, uh, entails or is a contradiction or is neutral against a sentence B that has been retrieved from the database. So the idea is that if you receive a new tweet, you can compare this tweet against a set of um, a set of uh, fakes that has been stored in our database, and you can know with this NLI uh, uh, module if there is an entailment. So the idea is 
if there is an entailment, if this sentence A supports the, the same as sentence B, this will be a fake. So this, uh, this is a, a video of, uh, of a demo that you can go here on YouTube to show how our system currently works. The emergence of coronavirus in 2020 changed our lives. Health recommendations against COVID-19 have been essential day by day. Nowadays, the facility plays a key role against the primary effects of this pandemic. However, the spread of misinformation in social networks in these difficult times threatens citizen safety with false remedies, the denial of the vaccine, and the illness caused by this virus and the institution's credibility. So we need systems to combat misinformation and avoid its propagation. The Civic Project analyzes as an ally for fact checkers and citizens in the fight against this epidemic. It comprises one of the initiatives funded by Fundación BBVA to mitigate the effects of coronavirus and is developed in the Technical University of Madrid by AIDA Group, initials corresponding to the Applied Intelligence and Data Analysis Research Group. If this is a prototype tool for Civic, it is designed to detect and monitor the information inside a piece of text. To show how it works, we have chosen the sentence Masks produce hypoxia as an example to try our app, given that this host has been massively spread during the COVID-19 pandemic. Our application selects the hosts that are similar to the chosen sentence and then checks that their statements are aligned to each other. If so, the results from fact-checking organizations, in this case, those collectives from the Tanchequea coronavirus, are displayed on the website. Finally, we also saw other results related to that host to help understand the dynamics of this infodemic. As it can be seen, our app can also receive texts in another language and return their similar hosts. Because we are conscious of how the problem of misinformation is global and not only restricted to one language. Okay, thanks. Um, I'm sorry about the, 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 the sound of the video. I have tried to reproduce several times, but if you have any problem to, to clearly hear the video, please go to the, to the, uh, to the web uh, site of YouTube and you can see there the, the, the full video. So, um, the idea is that we have participated in different challenges so related to, to the detection of this information. You can see here, like uh, our last results. Okay, this is not very uh, top. This is not very top. Uh, we, we obtained like the seventh position in this challenge. But please remember that, for instance, the winner, no fake was only trained for English. Our approach, I would like to highlight this, is a multilingual approach. So we can we can look for claims in Russian and and search uh, for some fakes in Portuguese, for instance. So this is our strength. So uh, I would like uh, I would like to say yes to the to the attendees uh, that could be interested in this problem of how to use uh, deep learning, machine learning, natural language processing, etc. Uh, to, to detect and to combat information disorder, fake news, fake news, etc., etc. Uh, here you can see some of our last, uh, most recent uh, publications. So, for instance, in the first publication, you can see uh, uh, here you can find there the, uh, the details of our architecture uh, or of our multilingual architecture to, to detect these uh, fakes that are based on transformer or, or a, a particular kind of uh, transformers. You can see in the, in the other two papers, for instance, a couple of examples of how to apply these approaches to detect hate speech or, or to, to, to how to use in the checking, in the automatic checking problems. Uh, here you can see some of our publications related to social networks, our our goals in a midterm is to move from this natural language processing analysis or from this NLP task 
and to include this, uh, the outcomes from this task in a more general system where the uh, graph or the social network can be analyzed using the outcomes from the natural language uh, process. So here you can see some of our papers related to the, to the problem of, uh, of how to detect communities, for instance, dynamic communities or static communities that could be talk about a particular fate. Uh, finally, here you can see some of our recent uh, publications or our some publications on particular problems. Not, this is not exactly related to the problem of fake news or misinformation, but uh, these are some um, examples about how this uh, natural language processing or these uh, social network analysis techniques can be used in, in other domains like radicalization or extremism. Um, my suggestion is, for instance, to take a look into this service. It's currently under evaluation in, in a very good journal, but we have published in uh, Archive uh, in, uh, a survey on extremism analysis using NLP. It's, I think it's uh, quite interesting. So, uh, finally, I would like uh, again to thanks to the organizing confer uh, conference for their kind invitation to give this keynote and I hope to receive emails or to receive questions from the attendees that could be interested uh, to work or to participate in this kind of uh, very hot problem like how to detect or how to combat um, uh, misinformation and fake news because this is a global and very huge problem and we are currently using uh, natural language processing, deep learning, or social network analysis. But anyway, there are all the possible uh, artificial intelligence techniques that could be applied in the near or in the mid future. So thank you very much for your attention, and I hope again to receive uh, some feedback from you in the near future. Thanks, uh, thanks again.